welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This week we're going to be working with data acquired from the Advanced Very High Resolution Radiometer, which is called AVHRR, and it's onboard NOAA satellites. One of the advantages of AVHRR is a broad regional coverage. So for example, this is one swath from the AVHRR sensor, and it covers all of Alaska, some of the Yukon, and some of eastern Russia. So we have very large regional coverage with each swath. Okay, the instantaneous field of view, which essentially becomes a pixel, is variable, and it may be a 1.1 kilometer instantaneous field of view directly below the sensor, and it may be an oblong instantaneous field of view at wider viewing angles. And one problem is for any one period of observation, most of the instantaneous field of view at high latitudes especially would be contaminated by cloud or cloud shadow. So this might be for one pixel all the instantaneous field of views for one day in Alaska. So the strategy is to composite the data over a weekly period or a two-week period or a 15-day period, and then we'd have hundreds of instantaneous field of views for a given pixel. And of those hundreds of samples, we would pick the one sample that has the maximum normalized difference vegetation index value. So that one sample that has the maximum value would tend to be the sample that is not contaminated by cloud or cloud shadows, and it would tend to be the sample that is nearly at nadir view directly below the sensor. Okay, this week we're going to work with ArcGIS with two AVHR products. So the first product is going to be the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index that's at a 8-kilometer pixel size, so very large pixel size, but it's available at a continental scale globally since 1982. So for example, here we have the normalized difference vegetation index for all of North America from 1986. And what we're going to do is process the data from 2006 so we can compare where the normalized difference vegetation index has changed. So for example, here we have 2006. And if we zoom in on Alaska and Western Canada, here's 1986, here's 2006. So you can see, for example, the Arctic tundra has increased in this vegetation index from 1986 to 2006. And a lot of Western Canada and Boreal Alaska has decreased in the normalized difference vegetation index. So here, once again, is 1986, and here is 2006. So that's what we're going to do for our first ArcGIS exercise, is process the data and then look at the changes from 1986 to 2006 based on these 8-kilometer pixels. Okay, the second AVHR data set that we're going to work with is from the U.S. Geologic Survey, and that's available for the lower 48 and for Alaska at one kilometer pixel size. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at the normalized difference vegetation index for the composite period from June 25th to July 1st, 2013. What was the maximum vegetation index during that period? So we can see, for example, the coastal plain is, has a very low vegetation index because it's still early in the growing season for that ecoregion, as opposed to interior Alaska has a higher vegetation index um, June 25th to July 1st. And some of the pixels will be flagged as no data because either they're unvegetated, so for example, the glaciers in the Alaska Range, the Brooks Range, the Arctic Ocean, or they're cloud contaminated. So for example, some of these pixels were screened out because they were contaminated with clouds. So if we zoom in, you can see that with one kilometer pixels, we have a fairly good 
picture of what's going on in the landscape. So for example, this is the Yukon River, the Alaska Range, the Brooks Range, etc. The other thing we're going to process from ABHR data from this data set is radiant temperature. So if we look at radiant temperature, the areas in red are higher radiant temperature. The areas in blue are cooler radiant temperatures. So for example, the Yukon River, higher elevations in the foothills of the Brooks Range, as opposed to these areas near Fairbanks, were fairly warm during that composite period. And we could actually use the identify tool to look at the radiant temperature. So for example, this had a radiant temperature of 30.5 degrees as opposed to this area had a radiant temperature of 20.5 degrees. Okay, so that's what we're going to do this week. And if you go to the Blackboard website, the first video session will be on the AVHR sensor itself.